Good morning, church. To those of you in the sanctuary, to those of you who are online, YouTube, and to those who are on the telephone line, thank you for coming. You may be seated. We will hear now first selection from the praise and worship team. Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So this morning we're gonna our first number we're gonna sing for you is entitled Leave It There. If the world from you withholds of the silver and his gold, and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in his word, he feeds the little bird. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Surely bring you out. Take your burdens to 
my shepherd, I will fear no darkness. Christ, the good shepherd, has compassion for all. Open my hearts to the goodness and mercy today. Love, not merely in thought and word, but in truth and action. Amen. Please be seated. Sharing our concerns. Yes. Substantial um, contribution. And I'm asking Pastor Carol and the rest of us to pray for her health so that she will feel better and improve. Melissa Jackson, she's lovely. And I know I have her contribution that I will drop into the, um, the uh, offering. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa Jackson. Jackson, yeah. Anybody else? Anyone else? Yes, I didn't have my procedure done Thursday. They had me come, and the doctor wasn't even there. They did not call me. It was a waste of time. And uh, they were thinking about me going to Walnut Creek. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. If one thing leads to another. So, I'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you. We'll continue to pray. Please let the church know as soon as you find out. I want to piggyback on Edna's announcement about Melissa Jackson. The way Melissa Jackson uh, became known to us is because I'm on dialysis and she sits in the chair next to me 
And one day I was talking to my technician about uh, a Women's Day or something we were talking about that was going on at the church. She overheard me mention Taylor. We started talking. She said she was a member of Taylor. She hadn't been here for a while. So um, that's, and then I told her, um, referred her to, um, to Esther. And she is a really, really nice woman. Yes. Thank you. And Leslie, we will be praying for you as well. Amen. I have a joy I'd like to share. Yesterday when I was out, many of you know on Saturdays, most Saturdays I am the caregiver or the point person for my aunt who is experiencing dementia and uh, I take her out as best I can, and so you can only imagine she's hard of hearing and I'm hard of seeing, so we are a pair when we are out in public. But there was a nice young lady who came to help us, who saw that I was in need, and she came to help us, and just through a course of many miracles, she waited and she held down the Uber for me, but do you know that young lady lives directly across the street and we were in El Cerrito. She lives directly across the street from the church. And I was so surprised and so I'm just saying that to say God will send you angels camped around you when you least expect it. And we, for me it was a lesson to say be mindful about how we treat people and how we receive people because she says she's been wondering about what's going on in the church and here we happen to just bump into each other. So I thank God for that blessing that came to me yesterday and thank God for her graciousness and being in the neighborhood and knowing something about the church. So thankful for that, thankful for that. And that's a joy. Amen. Any other joys and our concerns? Hearing none, let us turn to page 95 in the Song of Zion. Please stand as we sing, I want Jesus to walk with me. Pardon? Oh, sorry. We stay seated. <laughs> we stand on the congregation. It's a congregation song. first verse.
gracious God, as we open our hearts to you with humble adoration, asking and seeking for Jesus to walk closer with us, God, we first pause to give you thanks. Thanks for the beauty of this morning right here, right now. Thank you for those who made it safely here to this house. Thank you for those who were able to wake up and dial in on the internet or call in by phone. Thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of these great witnesses here on earth. Thank you, God, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us this week so that we can make it here once again to this time of worship. God, we just thank you for so many things that sometimes we take for granted, our breath that we breathe, that we don't have to do anything to turn on. You orchestrate that for us the way that our heart valves work and all of the different functions of the organs in our body and how they come into collaboration, we thank you. We thank you, God, for how you have just made us so marvelously and wonderfully created in your image. And so, God, as we stand here before you this morning with our hearts open, we know that there's trouble all around the world. We know that there are people who slept outside, who are unhoused, who are seeking a shelter, a place where they can actually turn the key to a lock and lock it behind them. God, we just ask that those who are in positions to make a difference, our leaders, our administrators, our church folks, that they do what you have called them to do, what you've gifted them to do, what you have charged them with, is to be the good folk who make right-minded decisions and do it in a peaceful manner. God, let evil be stomped out on every corner. Let there be more love between one another as folks open their eyes to be willing to see the humanity in each person. So we just ask your blessings on the city of Oakland and all of the surrounding cities. May somebody this morning wake up and decide not to do something that they thought they would do to hurt somebody else. May somebody this morning be willing to give a little bit more, to share themselves in whatever way that could help somebody else, to be kind to somebody, to render a nice word or lend a helping hand as the young lady helped me yesterday. Oh God, we just stand in the knowing that you are the healer of all for the concerns that were lifted up. We lift to you even higher, Melissa Jackson, and her kindness and her willingness to share. We also elevate to you the need and the desire for organ transplant. We are praying that one day soon, Leslie will get a word as my son received a word two years ago for a kidney. We know that, God, that is possible. And so we stand in that and celebrate right now, God, as that is being worked out. We pray a special blessing this morning for Judy that the, all of the things will be lined up together and that it will, the procedure will happen absolutely at the time that you have anointed it to happen. For you know the things that we don't that happen behind the scenes. I ask blessings on this community called Taylor that we stand in solidarity together for the good in honor of all of the saints who have walked before us and toiled and labored here in this church called Taylor Memorial United Methodist Church. That we walk shoulder to sh by shoulder to do your will your way. 
And God, this morning as our beautiful guest preacher comes to render us a word, bless him and anoint his word with your Holy Spirit and allow us to receive it in the manner that he's prepared it and already worked it out so that we can be lifted up on high, inspired and motivated to be better servants in this world. So bless us now in this time of worship as we turn our eyes and our hearts back to it. May we magnify and glorify you in everything that we do. May we continue to follow Jesus, healing, restoring, and offering redemption where we can while we thrive in this community, healing the brokenness in our world, our community, our own hearts, to be the best people that we can be for you. We pray that in Jesus' name, and as Jesus taught the disciples when they asked, well, how do we pray? Pray these words with me. Our Father, our great parent, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is already in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Congregational Song is hymn number 733. When you find it, please stand. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we want 
Amen, church. You may be seated. I was asked to read a short bio of our guest speaker. It's found on the back of your bulletin. You may follow along if you wish. Reverend Rob Noel Newton, Oakland native. Reverend Rob was licensed to preach the gospel at Imani Community Church in 2012 and ordained in 2019. Before becoming director of clergy, organizer for Faith in Action East Bay, he served as the director of national programs and interim director of HIV and clinical services for the Black AIDS Institute as an executive director for AIDS projects of the East Bay in Oakland. Reverend Rob was a 2015 fellow in Black Theology and Leadership Institute at Princeton Theological Seminary, where he also earned a certificate in theology and ministry. He is a contributing author to the book, Struggling in Good Faith, LGBTQ Inclusion from 13 American religious perspectives for which he penned the chapter on the black church. Reverend Rob lives in Discovery Bay, Oakland with his husband, Brandon, and their German short-haired pointer, Nubia. Reverend Rob, you need to know that we welcome you. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. And now for the scripture. Amen. The scripture comes from Psalm 78. Verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in, in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old things that we have heard and know that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a creed in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn and rise up and tell them to their children so that they should see their hope in God 
and not forget the work of God, but keep the commandments. This is the reading of the word. After the selection from Taylor Price team, we will hear Reverend Rod.
Good morning, Taylor. Good morning. First, giving honor to God and to the shepherd of this house, Reverend Estes. Thank you for inviting me to share a word from on high with you all today. I want to acknowledge that my mother thought it not robbery to join me in worship this morning. She got up early to ride in from Discovery Bay, and I'm grateful for her presence. My mother, Mrs. Alice Westbrooks, who is here with me. I bring you greetings from the Imani Community Church in East Oakland, where I serve on the ministerial staff, and from Faith in Action East Bay, where I serve as Director of Clergy Organizing. If you would, just allow me a moment to center myself. Let the words of my mouth bring you praise. Let the words that I speak be seasoned with your love and grace. May the things, O oh Lord, that I choose to say bring glory, not shame, to your name each day. Let the words of my mouth bring you praise. Amen. Uh, today I want to take a look at Psalm 78 with you. You've heard the first seven verses read already this morning. Uh, this particular psalm is labeled as a masculine of Asaph suggesting that it was written for instruction and meditation and probably sung as a form of teaching in the tabernacle. Psalm 78 is an ancient call to God's people to preserve and to pass on the narrative that gives meaning and hope to people in a fragmented and God-forgetting culture. A reminder to remember. There is a Twi word from the Akan tribe in Ghana that you may be familiar with, Sankofa. The word is often depicted in what's called an Adinkra symbol, as a mythical bird with its feet firmly planted forward while its head is effortlessly turned backwards to reach an egg. Sankofa loosely translates to go back and get it. The principle, though, encourages learning from the past to inform the future reaching back to move forward uh, and lifting as we climb, a reminder to remember. You can find in the Psalms some things that are also found in other books of the Bible, right? The, the stories from Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy are sung beautifully in Psalm 78. Psalm 78 retells the rhythmic history of Israel, rebellion and redemption, sin and forgiveness, wrath, and mercy. It tells us the story of how Israel was always breaking God's covenant while God was always keeping it. The psalmist speaks like a prophet, urging us to listen, yearning for us to learn a lesson from those who've gone before us and leave a legacy for those coming after us, a reminder to remember. The verses we're looking at today are only the introduction to this psalm. The rest of the psalm recounts the history of Israel, from their going out of Egypt, to their entering of the promised land, to the reign of King David. It's a psalm of instruction demonstrating Israel's cycle of unbelief. Verses 34 through 38 provide a good summary. But whenever God killed them, they went after him. They would turn and earnestly search for God. They would remember that God was their rock, that the Most High was their redeemer, but they were just flattering him with lip service. They were lying to him with their tongues. Their hearts weren't firmly set on him. They weren't faithful to his covenant. But God, being compassionate, kept forgiving their sins, kept avoiding destruction. He took back his anger so many times, wouldn't stir up all his wrath. This psalm urges people to follow the law, and it's meant to show the people of the time this pattern of God's saving mercy. It encourages the passing down from generation to generation the deeds of God. 
a reminder to remember. The story goes that the northern tribes of Israel had fallen because they had forgotten God and drifted off to the idols of their pagan neighbors. Judah was hanging on yet, but in danger of doing the same things her brothers and sisters had done up north. So Psalm 78 was written for a divided nation, a nation in danger of forgetting the God in whom they said they trusted. What the psalmist shows throughout this psalm is God's faithfulness to God's people despite their unfaithfulness. It also shows that Israel's repeated rebellion was due in large part to their inability to remember. So this is a reminder to remember. The psalmist says that this parable or this story teaches us riddles from days long gone or a lesson from of old. In other words, the application is timeless. If you jump ahead to the New Testament, in Matthew 13, the gospel writer tells us that Jesus spoke to the crowds only in parables. And he says in verse 35 that this was to fulfill what the prophet spoke. I'll speak in parables. I'll declare what has been hidden since the beginning of the world. What the psalmist says in Psalm 78, just like everything that Jesus says throughout the Gospels, applied to the generations before him and still applies to us today. So this is a reminder to remember. And I don't know, you're thinking like, the Bible is a big book. What all exactly am I supposed to remember? Well, I'm glad you asked. I came by Taylor Memorial this morning to suggest to you that there are at least three things that you really need to try to remember. The first thing that I want, you to, I want to remind you to remember is the story. Yes, remember the story told in this psalm and, and the rest of the Hebrew scriptures in the Old Testament. That's why we come to church, to remember the stories. Riddles from days long gone, ones that we've heard and learned about, ones that our ancestors told us. Remember how God created the universe. Remember how God delivered the Hebrews from Egyptian slavery. Remember how God stepped into the fire with those three Hebrew boys. Remember how God rescued Daniel from the lion's den. Remember the story. And remember the story of Jesus the Christ that's told in the Gospels. Remember the miracles. Remember how he turned water into wine. Remember how he healed the sick and raised the dead. Remember how he fed 5,000 families with five loaves and two fish. Remember how he was lynched on a Friday and alive again on early Sunday morning. Remember the story, and the story doesn't stop. Remember the stories of our collective ancestors, right? I know it's not Black History Month, but remember the stories told through the slave narratives. Remember the stories told through reporting like the 1619 Project and books like The Warmth of Other Sons by Isabel Wilkerson. Remember the stories that the enemy would rather you forget. Remember the stories held in the books that folks want to ban from our children's schools and our public libraries. It's a reminder to remember. Remember the stories of the folks in your own family tree. Remember your own story and share all those stories with your children and preserve all those stories for future generations, right? Taylor has a rich history of community involvement and outreach. Remember the stories of the saints who have toiled and served this community of Christians. It's a reminder to remember. But the psalmist, like Jesus, tells us that it's not enough just for us to remember the story. You've heard, and you've learned, and you've been taught, so you know and you believe, but you've also got a responsibility to share the story. The psalmist says in verse 4 that we're supposed to tell the next generation, right? Jesus says in the Great Commission that we're supposed to spread the gospel to all the nations of the world. Our ancestors said in that old Negro spiritual, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere. It's a reminder to remember the story, and it's a reminder to remember to tell the story. Every Christian in every generation has a duty to disciple others in the faith. We aren't playing our part in the story if we're not evangelizing and discipling other people. Listening and learning is good, but it's not enough. 
Teaching and discipling are things that every Christian should be doing all the time in different ways. You don't have to be a preacher to share the story about how following Jesus changed your life, about how God made a way out of no way, about how you got over. It's a reminder to remember the story, and it's a reminder to remember to tell the story. It's interesting that this psalm begins Israel's history with God's deliverance of Israel from Egypt. God gave Israel instructions on that very night to teach their children what God had done for them. God commanded them to hold a yearly Passover feast and told them, on that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. That's the, the same Passover that our Jewish kinfolk will observe this week. The entire Passover feast was designed as an elaborate teaching ritual, a reminder to remember. In the book of Deuteronomy, God commanded the people through Moses, only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. A reminder to remember the story, a reminder to remember to tell the story, and right at the end of verse 7, something that's easy to miss because we get caught up in remembering what God has done and how God has brought us through and how merciful God has been and how God has blessed us and how God has kept us. And we missed the part where the psalmist says that we've got to remember our responsibility. Remember the story, remember to tell the story, never forgetting God's deeds, but keeping God's commandments. If you only remember what God has done, you forget the part that you play in the story. And you just expect God to do. Let go and let God, wait on God, without you playing your part. That's what German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer called cheap grace. Yes, God is good all the time. Yes, Jesus paid it all. Yes, salvation is free. Remember that, run, tell that. And remember your responsibility to keep God's commandments. Moses had to step into leadership when he didn't feel qualified for that role in the face of an Egyptian slave state in order for the Hebrews to be freed, right? Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, and Daniel, young people, all had to stand strong in their faith in the face of an evil Babylonian empire in order for God to get the glory. They kept God's commandments. That's the part that the Israelites kept getting wrong. They remembered God. They, they passed the story down from generation to generation, but they kept forgetting the part they were supposed to play in the story, in keeping God's commandments. You know the commandments you're supposed to keep, right? Like love God. That includes not having any other gods before God. That's what Jesus called the great and first commandment when he was asked which commandment in the law is the greatest. Mm -hmm. And then he says, love your neighbors. Yeah. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You've got to remember to play your part in the story by keeping God's commandments. I, I love the prophet Amos, when he asks and answers, question, what does the Lord require of you? Answer, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. You've got to remember to play your part in the story. We hear Jesus when he speaks in the parable of the sheep and the goats and tells the righteous, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. A reminder to remember. Remember the story. Remember to tell the story. Remember to play your part in the story that is still being written today. It's a reminder to remember because forgetfulness leads to doubt, and doubt turns to unbelief, and unbelief leads to disobedience and rebellion. The good news, though, is that every day we spend above ground is a new opportunity for each of us to live into our better selves. Every day is a new opportunity to grow closer to God. Every day is another chance to get it right, to be more like Jesus. We'll try and we'll fail. We'll fall down and we'll get up. 
and that's all right with God, as long as you remember to play your part in this story. Taylor, I just stopped by this morning to encourage you, to remind you to remember. Remember the stories from days long gone, ones that we've heard and learned about, ones that our ancestors told us. Remember to tell the stories to the next generation so that your children and your children's children and their children's children will know. Remember to play your part in the stories that are still being written by keeping God's commandments. Remember Jesus, and like the good thief who was lynched next to Jesus on Calvary, Jesus will remember you. This is a reminder to remember. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. So the invitation that Reverend Rob has extended to us is to remember to tell it and then play our part. If your heart has been warmed or moved and you're feeling some kind of way about that, that you want to know a little bit more, you want to grow a little bit deeper in that awareness, the doors of the church of this church are always open. But I invite you to open the doors of your heart whether you've said you've been a Christian since you were a baby and came into the world or you're a newbie, doesn't matter. Today is an opportunity, yes. brother says, to be better. So I'm inviting you into a discipleship where you're one, willing to remember, two, wanting to evangelize by telling the good news, and three, willing to own your part. So if that's you and you say yes, Please come see me or give the church a call, 510-444-6162, and let's be in conversation about that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, ushers, and do your thing. The offertory prayer is in your bulletin. Let us pray together. God of compassion and mercy, you claim each one of us. The yoke of the Bible describes you.
At this time, we'd like to acknowledge any visitors worshiping with us today. Please stand, a microphone will come. Give us your name. Good morning, and church. My name is Alice Westbrooks and I'm visiting from Imani Community Church in Oakland. Rev. Rob is my son. <laughs> Thank you. It's always the pleasure when we have visitors. But now we claim you as special and you partly belong to us. Amen. So feel free to come back whenever you like. Thank you for coming. There are two announcements that I have If there are other, please stand to be prepared to give your announcement. The announcements I have, number one, Mission Ministry is still collecting white bath towels for the Covenant House here in Oakland. Please place your donations in the red bin out in the Nortex. Covenant House is our mission project and we often do projects with them to aid in their work. The second announcement I have is about Women's Day. It's scheduled for May 19th. There may be some changes, I don't know. The chairpersons are Sylvia Jenkins and Sherry Blunt. Any other announcements? Yes. Do you need a mic? <laughs> that, that was just being announced today because we've been waiting to try to get everything in order. We will have our first meeting this Tuesday at 3.30 here at the church to finalize what it is we're going to do, get our theme, so forth and so on. So any one of you who is interested in helping us in putting together Women's Day, please come and join us, okay? Thank you. <laughs> this Tuesday, 3.30. The, excuse me, the co-chair person is Sherry Blunt. Will you stand, please? <laughs> Sherry, would you stand so that we could see you? You're the co-chair. You're the helper. <laughs> you helping, Sherry? Sherry said okay. she helping. She's helping. That's a, that's a blessing. That's farther out the gate than some. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> I just want to remind everyone, church council meeting is today right after church. So that's a reminder. I expect to see you there. Right? And stay in your seat, as a matter of fact. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, for those who are staying, please stay in your seats for our church council meeting today. Anything else, Diantha? Sister that's Cooper? It. Thank you so much for being our worship leader. It's been a long time since Diantha and I have been on this platform together when I would come and preach, be a guest preacher back in the 2000s. Sister Diantha would pick me up from BART and speed me down 12th in her beautiful Mercedes and park across in that parking lot and 
bring me over. So I thank you so much, sister. And pull you across the street. It pulled me across <laughs> over those over those bumpy bumpy pavements. Uh, we're we gonna work on that. But I'd like to extend again another very very warm thank you. Let's give Reverend Rob. <laughs> One, for his willingness to come and share a wonderful word. Two, for the blessing in the message. Thank you, brother. Preached a good word for us today. And thank you to his mom for coming. It's always good to have your mother in the house. My mom is on the phone every Sunday. So I know you're there with me, mother. So it's good to have your mother with you. Thank you, Pastor Mother, <laughs> for coming. But Reverend Ron is going to give the benediction, and then he's going to recess out so that he can meet and greet with those of you who are not going to stay, or even if you want to meet and greet with him and then come on back into the sanctuary, we'd appreciate it. But Reverend Ron, you know that this pulpit is open anytime you want to come by, and I just thank this brother for being willing to share words. So come and stand to receive the benediction, please. Remember the story. Remember to tell the story. Remember to play your part in the story that's still being written by keeping God's commandments. Yeah. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.